today's Pentecost, God bless you. Pentecost simply means harvest. That is simply also to say 15 days after the resurrection of Jesus. So it's like saying that it is like 53 days from the time Jesus was arrested like a seed buried and by three days the seed lifts up his head by 50 days you should know the fruits that you are about to bear now 40 days after Jesus' ascended um, um, after Jesus rose up from the dead he met 500 people or over 500 people and he told them to tarry you, well, the word tarry simply means wait for me. I'm going to send you a paracletus, a helper. And last I was telling you that that word helper is the same helper like a marriage helper. It's like you have a marriage partner. That's the same way the Holy Spirit performs in your life. The way a wife and a husband operate in your life, that's exactly how the Holy Spirit should operate in your life. Now, many people have found this thing that many people say things like I don't like serving God because God is slow it takes God a long time to bring in judgment it takes God a long time for me to get my breakthrough it's not true you see we have reversed this thing about God you don't go to God because you have a need you go to God because you want to have a relationship so in every marriage, they will tell you that you don't get things in the marriage because you are just married. If you relate well with your partner, there are things you will get without sweat. And yesterday, those of you that came from IMF, I told you that God doesn't want sweat in his presence. And I'll prove it to you in the Bible. Sweat, if you sweat, he will not even come near you. Because sweat is a sign that you are struggling with the flesh. Am I talking to somebody here? So the disciples had to wait for 10 days after Jesus was gone and they were in one room. But the day the, Holy, the day of Pentecost came, there were only 120. As for the rest of the over 380, I'm sure they did not have the first Holy Spirit because they had other important things to do. Now, the Holy Ghost also, the people had come to perform the ceremonial Pentecost, which they called the Weeks of Harvest. And so Jerusalem was busy with all kinds of people coming to Jerusalem to buy, trade, do business like today we'll call um, some people that Agbabulushi Market today. So everybody had come to their place to buy and sell. But the location that Jesus said that wait for me I will come down and pour myself on you. The Holy Spirit will come and pour on you. There were people who were in the church, the synagogue, they didn't obtain the Holy Spirit. Because now you are not looking at two places. Wait or two things, wait for me. And the exact location, he said, wait for me. So if God tells you to wait at a particular location, he must find you there waiting. Am I talking to somebody here at all? He must find you there. What? I've seen so many people who move. They, they can't sit. But we have time to wait. If, let's say, your landlord is coming for rent. School fees. You don't have food in the house. And somebody tells you that, come and meet me at 9 o'clock in my office. And I'll help you. Will you go and talk to your landlord, the headmistress or head teacher? Go to the market and beg for food, or you will go to the one who says, Come to my office at nine. Where will you go? So you go and you go there, and when you go and he's not in, you still have confidence in the person, and you still will wait. When the people who you are owing are still calling you, you tell them, Please, I'm coming. You've not had your answer but you know that if this person arrives you will get it then the person 
you are told again that the person is in the office, but there's a long line. Will you say that then I'm going home? Then, you know, your hope is in, I just want to meet the person. Maybe just when you leave, then the person says, yes, where is this person? And when the person comes, it doesn't take hours. Say, oh, sorry, you've been waiting. This is your envelope. Take it. Seconds, you have the answer. The answer is fast, but the waiting is long. But waiting is a sign that you have confidence and belief in the person. If you go to any important person's office, a doctor, a lawyer, and you believe in their expertise, one of the things you should expect is to wait. <laughs> if you go to somebody who is not so good, then you are like, oh, let, me, uh, let me not even waste my time. And sometimes, that's what we do to God in prayer. We, we, we do like, I'm wasting my time praying. I'm wasting my time in his presence. I am wasting my time. In this one, if I've done something else, I would have been more successful. So this boy waited for 10 days. Now, 10 days is not easy. 10 days is talking about 24 times 10, so 240 hours. Morning, afternoon, evening, night, midnight. And this week, I'm going to trust God during the fast from tomorrow to teach on how they prayed each set of hour in eight hour season. What kind of prayers were they praying for the Holy Ghost? What kind of prayers were they praying? Because I'm bent on making this message on a date with God a part of us and a part of our life. So one day Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 happened to be in town in Jerusalem. And whilst he was in Jerusalem, he had to travel. A door was open for him to travel. An opportunity was open for him to travel. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, let's you have verse number 8. Okay. But <clears throat> I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. He said, he himself said, I'm going to wait in Ephesus because Pentecost is at hand. Why will he tarry in, um, in Ephesus for, for the Pentecost? So he knows that it is a moment. It's like the traditional people say it is the Afashe. It is a moment that the Holy Spirit visitation is remembered. But you know what? There are many people who will not go to church today. There are many who will even sin today. There, there are many who will not even reverence that today, pardon, let me go to church. Or today, let me spend time praying. Paul said, a great door, verse 9. In the meantime, um, but there's a wide door, or the King James said, there's a great and effective fervent door has been opened for me with many adversaries. You see, he was saying that there is a door open for me, oh, but this door, it comes with trouble. But if I wait for Pentecost, I will go through that door without trouble. Now, many of us go through life with so many troubles facing us because we did not wait on the Lord. I don't think I'm, I'm teaching so far. So, why would Paul? I thought Paul is so anointed that you can command the demons to just vanish and whatever. He said, no, I won't miss Pentecost. Because a great door for a great ministry has been opened for me. And there are many adversaries. Now, today I want to teach you on the fact that the reason, one reason why you must wait on God is because of your enemies. Because of your enemies. Because if a man waits on God, I can remember this thing very well, and I'll deal with a lot of 19s today. If you look at first case 19, you can remember the story of Elisha, Elijah, sorry, who had the son of the abundance of rain. And when he had the son of the abundance of rain, he and his servant went to pray. And he they told the king, Go. And the king went with his fastest chariots. He moved very fast. He went with four by four, the big car, and Elijah and his servant were sitting somewhere and were praying. And for me to know that Eli Elijah was praying without disturbance, the Bible said it was a servant that came to tell him whether the prayer is being answered or not. 
that should tell you that he was not being disrupted. He didn't want to be disrupted. So what was happening was that whilst he's praying, the servant will come there and say, it's carrying by. It's not he who will go to his phone and say, rah, 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 rah. the money has not landed. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he had given himself some timelines in which he, he had heard a prophetic word and he knew that God has shown it and God will do it. Let's not forget that the Bible said that concerning the prophecies you have received by them, wage a good warfare. So he was there praying and his servant come and tell him that there's nothing happening. The Bible said for seven times. For the seventh time, he came and he said, Elijah said, prayer done. And then as soon as he finished, the Bible said, the spirit, the hand of the Lord came upon him and carried him ahead of the one who was not praying. A man who waits on God mounts. A man who just comes to church walks. And those of you who came for the training yesterday, I taught you how to prepare to minister in front of people. And that will give you maximum result. Before your schoolmates finish school and all of you have CV, before they came, they come, you are the manager employing them. <laughs> I said, ah, but we were in school at the same time. The difference between in the king and Elijah is that Elijah spent time waiting on God. Spending quality time with God. If I say quality time, my wife would tell you that quality time is when you are talking to your spouse and you are not looking at your phone or watching TV. You are She's talking to you and your eyes are watching her. Your hands are holding her. And your body is responding to her. Not when you are talking to somebody and say, eh? what, what were you even saying? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That is not quality time. That is time. And God, God's love language is quality time. And God's love language quality time can be proved in so many ways when Martha and Mary were with Jesus and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and we are talking or oh, let me use the word doing ministry and Martha said oh this person is always around you praying so you are talking to this person why doesn't he come and join us and Jesus said Martha Martha you are troubled about so many things the thing which is good it's what your sister has chosen, and that will not be taken away from her. In other words, if you choose between doing ministration, ministry, and spending time with God, God prefers you spending time with Him than being in public. So if you look at Jesus' life, He spent more time with God on earth than spent more time with people on earth. Jesus didn't spend more than 60 days, even 45 days on earth ministry. Out of the three and a half years, he didn't spend 45 days ministering. But in our days, we spend years ministering and hours praying. Is it true? It's not true. So what happens is that our businesses are not moving. Our life is not moving. Things are not moving the way they should move because we are doing everything by our own strength and by our own might. Look at something. This pastor talking to you. Now, on the day of Pentecost, you will know that something significant happened, which I call the principle of agreement. Some say the principle of agreement. <clears throat> so, in Matthew 18, verse 20, you will see that the Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered, not the word gathered, but together. So, you can be gathered, but not together. You can be guarded, but not together. Now, it means that you can be guarded in a room with your spouse, and whilst you are talking and you are on your phone, you are guarded, but you are not together, and that doesn't bring productivity. So the Bible says, um, wherever two or three are guarded together in my name. So there are two, three things to know from this simple scripture. Number one, there must be a gathering. Number two, the gathering must be together, and the matri, the reason for the gathering must be in his name. Then what will then manifest is that he will be there. 
So if the gathering is all right now, let me give an example. Should I be practical? Okay, Frank, be up. Pat, be up. The two of you, do you talk? Do you flow? Do you flow? Ask, how, how far do you flow? Is it good? I don't think it's good. Is it good? I don't think it's good. Is it like before? No, to you it's not like before. See, you see, so right now we are not together. <laughs> we are guarded. But in the spiritual realm, we are not together. So you push you. Now, right now, somebody, if there's somebody here and you are not talking to, you must go and embrace the person. Because spiritually, we are not together. So the movement of the Holy Spirit can be limited to a certain area because we are guarded, but we are not together. So you can see a husband and a wife, they are always in the house. Sometimes the reason why they are not succeeding is because they are in the house. Everybody thinks they are married, but in the house they are not married. You, you think you are nice with her. You've done something, she's not happy. <laughs> you are laughing. And you might even notice that he's not really nice with you like before. And you are passing, praise the Lord. How are you? And I can tell you what you have done because it's something I've told you before, but it won't change. I have, I have data. So the two of you shake your hands and let's go on. Where was I? <laughs> This one, it is shaking hands physically, but the heart has not agreed. So let's be, no, I'm trying to. So some people say, why is it that we are in church and the Holy Ghost is not moving like the day of Pentecost? The day of Pentecost, the truth is that by the day of Pentecost, the people who were not correct, they left 380, they were not there. The people who were there at the day of Pentecost, read the Bible, they, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together. They were, there was something called together. Can, 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 we, can you take me there to that, that's where? And when the day of Pentecost they were formed, they were all with what? With one accord. With one? Pl play me an accord. Uh -huh. It is together. It's, you play, it is, it's a chord. You play a chord, not play me one one. Let me see. Play me chords. That's the they say. One is high, one is low, but they agree. It doesn't matter whether you are big man or small man or noble or not noble. There is some form of agreement. Now what happens in our churches is that people are not talking to each other. And they are singing, Come Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come with your power. Forget it, he's not there. Some say, but God is everywhere. No, He's everywhere, but He doesn't manifest every time. Yesterday, I proved it when I, God told me on Friday that Sun and um, tomorrow, yesterday, He will let Jesus stand physically in church. So what happened here yesterday? Some of you can get the video was that yes, people were following the power of God, but He was standing just here, and I asked people just stand here, and we we're having a personal encounter with Him outside here, because because He can be everywhere. You can be feeling the heat. But you don't have the fire. Most of what we feel in church is the heat of the Holy Spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost. Who is here? You don't have the fire. You must carry the fire. Heat is not transferable, but fire is transferable. That is why you live here. Nobody even knows you are still a Christian because you carry heat. Am I, am I teaching here? They were all with what? One accord. So wherever two or three. So if here we can be a thousand people gathered. But if our spirit is not together, you got him. You got him. The God I want to date is dating. You got his face. It's because I didn't come to church early. Like this guy would have been my girlfriend. And this person is speaking in tongues for me. Oh Lord, why didn't I come early? All kinds of things are going to the both side. Some one day three say, Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is there that God commands the blessing. 
There's a place that God will just say, you must be blessed, you can't feel. The reason why the, the Torah of Babel was divided because the people were also speaking in tongues. And look, there are about three types of tongues. Please. There is the tongues of men. 1 Corinthians 13. And there's the tongues of angels. And there's the tongues that came down on the day of Pentecost. Where people could hear them in their language. Because God wanted the Pentecost day fire to be transmitted throughout the world. So anybody from Libya, from Africa, from Ethiopia, from Greece, from Germany, from whatever country. That came to trade in Jerusalem that day. They could hear the gospel. And when the 3,000 people were one, they all went to their hometown with the gospel. Are you, are you with me? So that day, they spoke, the tongues they spoke was ability to learn languages. The ability to speak different languages. And when Paul also speak about tongues again in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, when you speak in tongues, no man understands. Now, that is different from the one on the day of Pentecost that human being understood. Are you, are you getting me here? I'm trying to solve one of the biggest confusion they have. Then there's also the tongue that somebody speaks and somebody can interpret it. So you are the one that can be interpreted. The one that cannot be interpreted. The one that somebody can hear in their native language. Are you with me? Am I teaching you well? Good. And I have given scriptures. So the one we speak in church or you speak in your prayer time is the one that nobody can understand. Nobody. It's only the spirit that understands and you communicate directly to God. So can we move on? So for it is better to pray alone than to pray in disagreement. That is why I've always said that when it came to Jesus, may I learn from Jesus, Jesus spent more time praying alone than with people. And what he did was simple. He can go to Peter, James and John, but he'll go a stone through away. I pray here, I pray here. Because the most painful thing in life is to pray with somebody who is sleeping. And sleep and we we are transmittable. Is it true or is it not true? If you sit in a car with somebody and the person says, I want to wee wee, everybody in the bus can get that wee If you are in a room with somebody who keeps yawning, oh, 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 very soon everybody starts what? Yawning. Because those things are easy, they are transmissible like a coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's lack of faith can break down your lack, your, your, your level of faith. So it's better you spend an alone time with God than to be in this agreement with somebody. Oh, amen. Sometimes I'm there and somebody calls me, man of God, please pray for me, please pray for me. And I'm not ready to pray, so I say I'll call you back or something, I'll wait for it hour or two i'll pray but i won't call you the reason why because the time you called me i remember you've done something bad and i'm not happy so if even i pray i know that it will be just worse so i'll go into prayer and ask god god help me to forgive this person and i sometimes i'll call you i pray say man of god you didn't pray for me early but now by grace of god i'm okay you don't know why i delayed even jesus delayed coming to lazarus grace yeah <laughs> you have to even check time before coming there. So sometimes we are not getting results because it is not even the prayer. It is that the, it's not even about you going to spend time with God. Have you settled your case? So the Bible said, if you are presenting your offering, your seed, you are presenting an offering, a seed, no matter how big or small it is, you bring it to the altar and you remember, not you. So like Frank. You just discovered that she has something against you. All the offering you gave yesterday and whatever is gone. Good. So he said, and you remember, if you didn't remember there, you are okay. But if you remember that somebody has something against you, he said, as for the offering, leave it there. We need the offering. But for your own good and the, for you to break through, go and reconcile with the person. Why? So that the offer you gave will become a beneficial because there is no agreement with you. Because at all, that 
In relationship with God, it is both horizontal and vertical. If you can't relate with man, how can you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother you see? It doesn't work. That is why the greatest is in my book, um, Workshop to Showroom, the greatest level, hope is good, faith is good, but the greatest way to have miracles is love. Love, uh, when you combine faith and love, you are done. Nothing will delay your life. So, oh, am I teaching something here? So, Bible talks about faith out of love. Many of me have got a lot of miracles in my life, not because I have faith, but because of my personal love for God. Am I talking to somebody here? You can love somebody and not have faith in you. <laughs> because love is unconditional. You love the person for who the person is. You can love somebody you know that he doesn't have anything to give you. Say, so one day when I make it, I'll bless you. So okay. But you know, but before you ask, before long, you see that the person breaks through one, comes and gives it to you. It's love. May love supersede everything. So, we need to come to a place in, in life where we learn to agree. Say agree. I didn't hear you. To do what? Now, you see, in life, there is no way you can agree with everybody. It's not possible. Because oh, no. everybody has a different mind. And I always say that sometimes even the motive can be wrong, but on your way you become right. And I've been teaching this that the prodigal son, the first reason why he decided to go to his father was not because he missed the father. It was hunger. The reason for going back to the father was not because he missed home. If he had succeeded, he would never have gone home. It was the day he was about to eat the food of pigs and they would not give him. Even food of pigs, they said, cry. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Servants even have food to eat. I'll go back to my father and I'll tell him to accept me to be a servant. But the real motive for going was not to be a servant. The motive for going was hunger. <laughs> but along the line, he became a servant. God, his father restored him back to sonship. But it, the real motive was not positive. And sometimes the real motive might not be positive, but you need to take the step forward. But as you go on, you will learn how to become positive. Can I hear an amen? amen. Are we learning something here? Are we learning something here? So you can be there as a group, company, business, entity. You are praying the Lord, bring me Pentacles. That is harvest. Harvest is always delayed because there's a counter seed. And when there is no accord, that is why for you to have a crop, a crop or a seed to grow very fast, you must have two or three. Is it true? Yeah, you put two, three corn on the ground, it comes faster than putting one. Because when they come together, they ferment. By the fermentation, that also leads to growth. It is the disagreement that brings us to agreement. Now, married couples that don't argue, they will never become mature and love themselves. Married couples that don't argue, it is full of pretense. Because let me tell you, until there is a cut, a wound, there cannot be bonding. Are you with me or you are not with me? If I have a cut here, my wife has a cut here, and we put our wound together, despite our wounds, after days, we can't remove our hand. Our, our veins and tissues will start getting together and we become more and more together. But when there are wounds and you keep it together, you keep it independently, what happens is that you are healed but you are not bonded. Because wounds must be put together. And wounds are part of the ways of becoming mature for your harvest. <laughs> Am I teaching well? So, I'm not talking about we being there and always being happy with ourselves as friends and congregants and church members. No, I'm talking about the fact that we will have disagreement, we will have our own problems, but life must still go on. There must be an ability to forgive because 
how you forgive is how you will be forgiven. And you are not just forgiving because you have to forgive. You are forgiving because you want some answers in your life. And without that one, those answers will never come. And as long as we are human beings, we will keep hurting each other. No, it's not true. If nobody has hurt you before in life, let me show you an Someone said, man of God, I'm happy. You are just a good man of God. You've never done anything to hurt me like my former chair. I said, wait, I'm coming. <laughs> I said, oh, wait, I'm coming. When I get there, you know I've arrived. <laughs> oh, amen. When the Jesus was preaching and said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. It means that somebody was getting offended. He said, blessed is he who is not offended in me because... People were getting angry at what was Judas got angry with him for not keeping the money well, for the food thing, they put it on your feet where you can give it to the poor. I mean, all kinds of things can make people angry. Because Jesus has his mind, Peter has his mind, don't die, I will die. <laughs> go and buy me food. They go, struggle to buy the watchie. I was there, they bought the watchie. The brother white church, Jesus said, don't worry, I've already eaten. Who did you eat? They see a lady there. He's been asked. Six hours. So he has been talking to this lady. So this lady has cooked for him. He said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. So you knew that your food is to do the will of him that sent you. And you sent me to go and buy food that you will not eat. He, did you send us so that I can spend this time with the lady alone? Look at you. I mean, it's, it's so easy for you to become offended because a person has made a decision contrary to your opinion. But the truth is that there must be harmony. There must be what? I didn't hear you. So that what? The Lord will dwell in our midst. So the day of Pentecost, the Lord came to dwell in the midst.